No, I'm getting you angry. You can do it. <gasps> uh, I want that saxophone yeah, banana! <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna learn some secrets about stuff that you probably didn't want to know about. Specifically, carnivals. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that's a that big has intro. a broad range. That's a broad range. A very broad range. When I was younger, I grew up by the boardwalk, and one time we were playing ring toss, and literally like the last ring, I got tossed it as like my family was leaving, landed on the glass bottle. I want a giant no generic Blues Clues dog. And a Blues Blues? Yep. <laughs> The royalty-free version of Blue's Clues Dog, <laughs> and it ended up growing mold inside of it. Oh. So yeah, everything is not as wonderful as it seems. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that that's why won. it was so moldy. It's yeah. been there for 80 yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. How about you? You like a carnival? I've never won one of the big guys. Okay. Ever. And one time I won one so bad because it was a banana like playing a saxophone. Oh, oh. you love a fruit with a talent. I do love <laughs> anthropomorphized fruit. But I like my favorite games were like the frog, where you oh. tried to get on the lily pad, yeah. and then the little horse racing things, because someone has to win that. Yeah, with the squirt guns? Yes, yeah. exactly. I don't get into these games that clearly they're ripping you off. It looks like mm -hmm. everyone should be able to do this, but we're gonna find out exactly why it's impossible and why we keep playing and giving them all of our money, because we have an excellent, professionally intelligent person here with us today. Mark Rover is in the studio! Yeah, <laughs> your brain is so much more functioning so. than both of ours put together. Yeah, so you worked for NASA? I did, yeah, for okay. nine years. But you're only 12 years old. How did that happen? Uh -huh. I'm like the Doogie Howser of space. I worked on the Curiosity rover for mm -hmm. seven of those, so that's like the rovers that's on Mars now. Oh, heard of it. <laughs> so like, your parents are proud. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Yeah, what's and now that? I do YouTube. <laughs> you went from NASA to YouTube. Yeah. So. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How does one decide to do that? Did you just want to teach people? Yeah, so that's, yeah, I'm passionate about like getting people pumped about science and education. Mm -hmm. And like YouTube's a great platform for that, right? And on a global level, yeah. On a global level, yeah. You yeah. also gave a talk at Pixar is one of our fun facts about you. This is true, yeah. They're really good about stories, okay. you know? And they really keyed into that and had like a lot of really good insights, so. Well, get ready for none of that today with us. <laughs> We're talking about carnival games. It's summer, it's carnival season. Yeah. And specifically those ones where you know there's something sneaky going on. It can't just be physics. It uh, has to be fooling you. Mm -hmm. So is it cool if we play a couple games yeah, and you tell totally. us the inside scoop? Yeah. yeah, and you destroy dreams of children who yeah. want to go to carnivals in the future. Hey, you got a moldy dues clues. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. Here we are in a different part of our set. Okay, we're gonna walk through three very popular carnival games, okay. and maybe you can explain to us the physics, math, et cetera, behind sure. why you cannot always win these games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one is the milk bottle toss, which is, as we can see, a this classic. Is like, yeah, mm -hmm. this is the budget version, I feel like, if I'm... Excuse you, it definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> we provide our own wardrobe. <laughs> So like everyone kind of does feel that you're getting ripped off at the carnival. But as a man of science, we went down there uh -huh. and uh, we collected data for like a day. I paid some high school kids and they literally, there's like 26 games and we, we marked how many times people won each game. <gasps> and so with that, we figured out which games were total ripoffs, which you actually have a chance at winning. But you were right, Grace. Uh -huh. It's absolutely the games that are most lucrative are ones where they get you to overestimate your chances of winning. Mm -hmm. Where you come in being like, oh, I got this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The classic one is like the basketball shoot game. Yeah. So you get dudes like with their girlfriend, and you're like, dude, I started on my junior high basketball team for two <laughs> years, like I got this, right? <laughs> and then we saw that we were missing short a bunch. Like they weren't going in. Uh -huh. And then I busted out the tape measure, and uh, sure enough, it's 28 feet back, which is further than the three-pointer. That's okay. okay, but the rim is 11 feet tall, and a typical rim is 10. So if you've got like a deadly three-pointer locked in your muscle memory, it's actually a disadvantage, <gasps> right? Uh huh. Because you think, oh, I got this, but they do little tricks. And then they also have a tarp underneath the basket, right. so someone can't stand directly underneath. 
So you can't measure it directly. So it would be more obvious, right? Yeah, You're like, right. dude, that guy's six foot. The room looks too tall. Oh, That's why, like, the tuck comes out. Sneaky. So then for the milk bottle game. Yeah, walk us through this. Yeah, one of the things they'll do is they'll have it bottom weighted. Why oh. do you think, what would that do? Same. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, memory's really hard to tip over. I mean, like, right. oh, girl, you look like a milk bottle. Yeah. <laughs> the low center of mass makes it hard to tip over. And if they allow you to touch it, you can test the center of mass on something by where it'll balance on your finger. So mm -hmm. if this was a, a bottom weighted one, it would balance like right here. Sure. And you'd be like, mm mm, girl. That's I'm that's that so was mean. the greatest memory impression I've ever <laughs> so seen. Mean. That was so good. One in about, I think it was 18 people win this one. So if you just hit it right in the right spot, it can generally work. Can I try one? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Oh God, I'm not even, why did I? I know, you, had, you <laughs> brought this upon yourself. Oh, yeah. there you go. Now I'm getting You angry. can do it. Uh, I want that saxophone yeah, banana. <laughs> okay. Oh, that one was close. That the one was close. The illusion of it looked like That's you were in a win right. every time. It's so weird, it rolled back almost like it wants me to try one more okay. time. Yep. Don't you take me to it. Vegas. You can do it. Oh, oh wow, wait, we have editing. You can do it. Yay! Wow, Mamrie, good job. Good. Okay, this is a, a game I'm familiar with. Yes. The glass bottle ring toss. This is how I won my generic Blue's Clues dog. Uh, rest in peace. Any game in general at the carnival that you're throwing, the objects have one thing in common. They're lightweight and they have a high coefficient of restitution, which means they're really bouncy. So oh, they'll yeah. give you like ping pong balls or wiffle balls, right. right? And that's because when it hits anything, they're hard, they're going to bounce. So any imperfection in your throw will be magnified uh -huh. and sort of make it random. We saw 850 throws on this game for an entire day, zero wins. Stop it! Whoa! No. I'm no. shocked! That's why he was so surprised when he won the Moldy Blues. Yeah! Jeez. I was the most surprised he's ever been <laughs> on me in my Jeez. entire life. Gracie, let's okay. see if the right. girl still got yeah. it. Okay. So she, yeah, oh, wow, she does it overhand. Nope. Nope. Interesting. Like a four. frisbee. Okay. Wow. It's, well, okay, ready? One more. And that's how it's done. Do you want to try, ma'am? Yeah, for sure. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just really strong. It's okay. It's okay. It's the wind. Oh. It's the air conditioning. There's a lot of AC. Yeah. I had a power bar. Oh! oh! Did you hear that? See, that was very that. soothing. I would pay yeah. five more dollars for that noise. <laughs> okay, before we get into this last game, what is the most winnable game at a carnival? Ooh. I mean, there's ones where it's like eight people lined up and you squirt in the water. Yeah, you can yeah. get only like three people there, then you have a one in two chance of winning. Right. I'll tell you, the, the three that we found that nobody won all day long uh -huh. were the, the ring toss game, uh -huh. the one where you have to shoot out the star with the BBs, and then the ladder climb game. What? You've seen the, oh, there's wait, like a ladder like, and you climb up. It's oh. very much like an obstacle right course from fair. Guts. Yeah, 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 and you're like, yeah, go, 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 go. and it's impossible, and you fall down. Like, yeah, you because people think that it's like a ladder, like a rope bridge that's supported on two points, but the trick is if you look at the top of the wall, it's only supported in one point on both ends. Right. Which means, from a physics standpoint, you have to keep your center of mass directly over a straight line, basically like crawling up a tightrope. Oh which is very God. difficult, but it's the illusion, again, you overestimate your chances of winning, because you're mm -hmm. like, dude, I could climb up a rope, of uh, the rope ladder, but yeah. mm -mm. Once Ooh, again, girl. once, once again, again. He made her that bitch. Carnival sass. <laughs> okay, our final game is called the plastic apple basket ball toss. Yeah. Them's were words. Oh, was that right? <laughs> apple basket toss. Boots with the fur. Wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically the game where you have a basket sort of at an angle and you throw a ball into it to try and get it in and win a prize. And this is one of the subset of games where if you actually bring some skill to the table, you can increase your chances of winning. Some of them are just luck, some of them are totally stacked against you. But this is sort of the middle ground where there are some strategies. Okay, <gasps> tell me. Sometimes people have said that like they've done research and they actually put a spring in there. Which like is, behind it? Yeah. So what you don't want to do is throw it and have it hit the bottom of that because it'll come straight out. So the key, what you want to do is you want to lose some of your kinetic energy, which is the energy of speed, right. by hitting the lip first, oh. and then it's going to go back, and then it's going to stay inside. You could also kind of hit the top, but mm. I think that's hard. So you want it to bounce before it lands behind exactly. the back. Exactly. You don't okay. want, if you hit the back first, you're pretty much hosed. OK. Try to bounce it off the top. Ah! Uh, I'm, I'm already addicted. I purposely made an example of what people do wrong. The near miss, though, right? Yeah, you're like, I was so I want close. More. Oh! Yeah! My mom always said I was one in 14. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, we 
gave you an example of each possibility That's that right. could happen to you. I love that this episode, for me, has been which game to waste your money on. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's my strength. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, cool. That was great. Yeah. Uh, Where can people find you online if they don't already know? Mark Rober. That's my name. So I have a YouTube channel and we do like science education things. Go check it out. Please. Get smarter. Thanks for coming. All right. Bye. Bye. Scribner, who says, decorated some This Might Get Things shoes in honor of my favorite show, and they look amazing, and now I want a pair. Those are adorable. A tag at This Might Get on any social media platform with your self-expression of our show. We're here Monday through Friday. Hit that bell notification so you know exactly when we upload. Let's get you a carnival drink. Yeah, please.